Okay, Gary, let's talk about the things we talked about. So number one, whether you're standing or sitting or whatever, if you're sitting, make sure you're sitting on the edge of the chair, okay? Make sure your shoulders are straight. Um, make sure that your this knee is pointing pretty much outward, you know, not uh, just not way over to the left, but pretty much straight forward. And that your right leg is kind of less than at a 45. You're supporting the guitar, so it just sits there. Then you want to have a straight, good posture. You want your shoulders relaxed. You don't want to be hunched over. You want to be up. You don't want to be down like this plan. You want to be like this. And then you want to be able to have your arms just drooping, nice and relaxed. And then with your arm just straight down, you just bring it up, bending at the elbow. And you might have to bring, bring it back a little bit, you know, depending where you are. But you want your wrist straight like this. And like I said, that Kung Fu grip, that's how you, that's how you get the strength is you want to have um, you don't want to have a bent wrist like this. You want to play like the carpal tunnel playing like this. Um, you want to be able to play with your thumb in the middle of the neck. And yeah, when you want to bend string, sure, you're going to be like this. You're going to be more like this type of thing. But to play scales, you want to be able to have a good vertical attack. You know, you want the, these knuckles to be perpendicular with the fretboard. You know, um, uh, the, the lighting's no good that way. But you, you don't want to play like this. You want to be like this with just the tips hitting the frets and you want you want to stop the fret right up against the fret um, okay and then um, now the exception to that is in the first position uh, because your fingers can extend easier like this uh, you're just extending it out so you can put play at an angle so one thing when like you're playing a C cowboy chord you want these fingers lined up you don't you know you want you want them lined up to in straight line like that and then you, the nail sort of like pointing right at you that way you can go from there to there to there you can reach no problem reaching out instead of reaching sideways your fingers don't move that way so easy they move out easier so in first position that's okay and then you know like when you're playing a d you want to make sure that this a a note is fretted there at the third string right up against it you want to play it like that you want it right up there you know, yeah, if you want to play it like that, that's cool too. And so then here's the, the chord, the scales we're going to work on. So we learned this shape, so we're starting at the C. Okay, f um, so we're starting with C, and that's a cowboy chord. Here's your root, and here. But we can play, you already know this scale, which is the same as this. Okay, so you should play both. You played up here too, since you already know the shape. But then you'll root. There's that's the position going nutward. Now going bridgeward, you're putting the two here, and your octave is here, and so you can play this: two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. So that's in the um, playing the A shape. C major using the A shape, okay? Now there's another scale, this one. That's C major also. That's under the G shape. You don't have to play that chord. That's kind of a hard chord to play. You can play half of it though. Or this way. And so that is uh, one, three, one, two, four, one, three, four. And so practice these. Nice and relaxed with alternating picking. You know, do one time starting downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. The next one, upstroke, downstroke, and whatever. You should be able to alternate between those two. And then if you want to, you can play. So you can do it like this, starting here. Then starting here where you just ended. And then make sure you come down. maybe only play coming down that'll help you get it memorized because you'll just you don't want to burn it into you know burn it into ROM just only going up right and then you'll get lost if you just try to come down and so then then for extra credit you can play a two octave scale this is a Segovia scale so you're going two four one two four one three then you're gonna move the one to the octave one, three, one, two, four. 
one, three. So that's a tough move. It's a good move. It's a good move to practice. So try to play it legato and just play it slow. And the way you move is with your arm. A shift like that, a big shift like that, you move your arm. See how my arm moved? Not just my fingers, my arm moved. And I'm keeping everything the same. Keeping my wrist straight, everything. Keeping the, the kung fu grip, everything. And that's, that's the thing about shifting, is you let your arm shift and not your, you're not gonna go like, like this, right? That's, that's no good. Okay, so then we talked about um, uh, relaxing, keeping your wrist straight. We talked about strumming. And so we talked about um, using a metronome all the time and that it, the tendency is to, uh, to hit the beat early. And so just try to think of hitting it late and then you'll probably hit it right on the time. So then the way you count is a quarter note is a beat. So we'll start the metronome. One, two, three, four. So in four, four time, there's four quarter notes to a measure. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. And if there's eighth notes, it's one and two and three and four and. And if there's a triplet, it's one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear that through the mic. So I'll, I'll, um, I said it though. So, and then you can have all types of combinations. So if I go one, two, and one, two, three, four, and so. And so the way you do it is you downstroke on the downbeat on the quarter note. One, two, three, four. I'm playing staccato just so you can pay attention to it, but you don't have to stop it. You know. And then on the eighth note, you, you stroke up. So one and two and three and four and. And then a triplet, you go down, I mean up, down, up. I'm, I'm sorry, down, up, down. So a triplet goes one, two, three. And even if there's triplets in a row, you, you're gonna play a down stroke two times in a row. So it's, let's say it's one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, and so there's all kinds of combinations of that and you'll see that on the rhythm sheets uh, in, the, in the jazz books. See what else do we have. Um, uh, so I'll go over the cage system if you have time. So remember, it's the the, the four shape, uh, five shapes: C, A, G, D. Oops, I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to redo. The, the, cut that. Um, I got this bandage which is screwing me up. C, A. G, E, D. And so what we do, we played them in first position. So we're going to take those shapes and move them up and down the neck by barring. So the C shape, we do it like this, two, three, four. And then if we just move it up and bar, here we have that C sharp major using the C shape. D major using the C shape. D sharp or E flat using the C shape. E major using the C shape. Okay, so that's how that works. And within that, we have this scale. And if we're in the, you know, if you move it up here, and so on. So you're always going to have that scale within the shape. And then the next shape is A. So let's play C major using the A shape. So lots of guys play it like this, or you can play it like this. And then the scale is the one that you're learning. Okay. Um, and then the next is G shape. So here's C major using the G shape at the fifth position. And you can play it like this. You can play the fat side or the thin side. And not play it like this, because it's kind of, kind of hard. And so the scale there is the other one that we're learning. And so we can just stop, the, then the, then after G is E, so this one's, 
Um, so this one, so here's your C, it's at the eighth fret. And so it's the same shape as this one, except you're starting on the sixth string. And so then you can, um, the second half's kind of tricky if you can do it by ear. It's in the neck diagram in your share, but but most of this one just will focus on it. And then the D shape is here. So here I'm playing C. I'm playing C major using the D shape here. And um, uh, so that's that's the uh, diatonic scale going one, two, four, one, two, four, shift, one, three, four, shift. So that one's kind of hard. You can skip it. So, but those first four, uh, you got quite a bit right there. And then also we talked about not enough. You know, this is a lot. You're going to be doing well just to do this that scale. We talked about playing modes in the root of six. So we're going to start with G. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So that's G major. So here's that E shape uh, scale. Then tops there and what you're doing there is you're playing the G major scale but you're starting at different degrees so here we start with the one here we're starting for the two a going from two to two and then so on the three going from three to three and so on um, but we'll wait we'll learn about that later and uh, so just focus mostly on your posture um, keep your wrist straight or you're going to get carpal tunnel. Keep your arm relaxed. Um, try to keep, you know, just relaxed. Um, try not to dig your thumb in like this, in the back of the neck. And, and if you're playing in the first position, it's okay to have your thumb like that, like you do. That's fine. But then when you start moving up and needing to have more vertical attack, uh, you need to have your thumb move down more towards the middle of the neck and see how it's, it's behind, in between the two and the one. You know, it's not it's not way over here. It's like this. Okay, I think that's good. That's 12 minutes to 13 minutes.